everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today, February 28th, is Rare Disease Day. Technically, Rare Disease Day is February 29th, but in years that aren't leap years, then Rare Disease Day is February 28th. The purpose of this day is to bring awareness and visibility to rare diseases, and it's a way for a lot of people who are living with or supporting people with a rare disease to kind of bring them all together because some diagnoses are so infrequent that there isn't a huge community of people that are all dealing with the same thing. I have been living with chronic fatigue syndrome for over a decade, and I don't think that this technically classifies as a rare disease, but I can certainly empathize with a long process of medical tests and the frustration of not getting a diagnosis that can lead to improvement. Ultimately, chronic fatigue syndrome is a diagnosis by exclusion, so we've ruled out a lot of other things besides saying, well, you fit in this category of people that are chronically tired more so than they should be. And I think to get to that point, it was nine months to a year of medical tests. And so I remember just how really frustrating the whole process was. Not only like dealing through getting a negative result after negative result, but also coming to terms of living with a chronic condition and something that, okay, there isn't a quick, easy fix for me. And so I can empathize with families who are dealing with diseases that aren't well known. Uh, there's not a lot of research going into how to solve them and things like that. And so if you'd like to learn more, you can find more information at the Rare Disease Day website that I'll have down in the video description. Why am I talking about this today? Well, the Rare Disease Day logo are these multicolored hands that overlap and there's colors that are blending into one another. And that felt like something that would be really fun to translate onto yarn. So we're gonna dye some yarn today using a blue, a pink, and then a green. I'm gonna mix from primary colors and we're gonna layer them together and have some blending and create a colorway. For our color palette, we're gonna use some older stock solutions of three primary colors from Derma. Caribbean Blue, Brilliant Yellow, and Deep Magenta. Yes, Deep Magenta. Right here, I have three smaller squeeze bottles, and I am going to fill them a little, well, a lot over halfway, full of water. Uh, I want to dilute all of our dyes for this layering project. Uh, they don't need to be super saturated. Um, and, I mean, I also don't have a lot of each of the colors. So, we can edit the colors as we go on. But to start, we're going to add just a little bit of our deep magenta dye to one. Today is not about measurements. So the next we're gonna add a little bit of some Caribbean blue. If any color is not deep enough, we can add more. If it's too deep, we can add less. And then we're gonna make a green with some Caribbean blue. This might be too much. And some brilliant yellow. And I'm adding, attempting to add a lot more of the yellow than the blue. This might be too teal and I might need to dilute it, although actually that's looking very nice and green. Oh, that's actually a really great green. Okay. Uh, the blues will definitely spread more probably than the yellow, but we'll see how it all comes together. Let's go set up our dye bath. Today we're going to dye 300 grams of yarn. We're going to dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. And then we're also going to dye 100 grams of Nomad's Salcanti Yarn. This bulky weight yarn is 100% Superwash Merino Wool. It is delightful. Now, this has pre-soaked almost a week. Well, five days. This is pre-soaked five days. These have pre-soaked about 20 minutes. So, just throwing that out there. And now I'm gonna come in with a mixture that has eight cups of water and six tablespoons of white vinegar. This is a lot more acid than I usually start with, but I wanted to add this much so that way it gives us a chance 
some of these colors that can be big spreaders will start to bind to our yarn. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add all eight cups. You can see that we still have yarn that is on or even above the surface, but if we have less water, then that sort of compresses the yarn that is left. And so by having it be slightly less compressed, the colors in theory could spread through more. But anyway, I'm gonna start heating this up and then we'll start dyeing our yarn. We are gonna dye some layered hearts today. And so I'm planning on taking colors and we're just gonna do two of each color right now, or maybe even just one of each color to see how we feel. And actually this blue is really, really nice. Let's check our pink. Oh yeah, I think we did a really good amount of these various colors. And so I'm gonna come in and add some more of this. And I mean, I'm not sure how light to go. We can do some half hearts as well. Maybe it should be a little bit sparse. Ooh, that would be a little bit new for me, but let's do, and we'll add some more pink. And I'm gonna do a green right here. And another green there. All right, I think that that's pretty good. One of my goals when I do a random layered color effect like I'm doing right here is to try to get a little bit of each color all the way across. <laughs> but I like layering hearts versus lines, zigzags, or sometimes other scribbles because it helps me spread out the colors but also have them in a random configuration. Because while I'm trying to like place it a little bit evenly all over, it does allow for some randomness. And now here is one of the fun things. Here is a spot where the colors uh, all kind of come together and specifically our pink and our green, but all of our colors are layered at this one spot. And this is bringing some of those darks that we saw in the Rare Disease Day logo. So I'm pretty excited about this actually. At this stage, we have a couple of choices. We could check to see how much color we have left in each spot. We could flip right away, letting these colors spread more, or we can wait. And I am gonna wait, whew, let's wait five minutes, and then we'll check and see how these colors are spreading, and then we can move on and decide if we wanna wait a little bit longer. And the reason why I'm wanting to wait is that Caribbean blue is a color that can spread a lot, and so it's possible. And the fact that the, the green seems to be staying green, I'm, eh, I'm seeing a little bit of some breaking over here. And by breaking, I mean that you see a little bit of a blue halo around the green. The yellows are striking faster. The blues are spreading more. Uh, and since I want to avoid a lot of breaking, I wanna give some time for the blues to really set before we move the yarn. So now we wait. All right, I'm reducing the heat. And let's check. Okay, it looks like, I mean, maybe there's like a hint of some pinks, but it looks like things are striking pretty well. And so there might be some spread, but again, that is something that I am okay with. I'm now gonna pick up all of our yarn and flip it over. And I should get my tongs to help with this. <laughs> Spoons are good. Aw, spoons. I'm thinking of spoon theory now. Um, spoons are really good uh, for checking the color and stuff, but for a good flip, it is way nicer to use tongs because then I can like lift and move the yarn better. And so the goal is to try to expose part of the yarn that doesn't have very much color on it. And we're gonna layer more color. And so the more flips we do, oh, those are big hearts. The more flips we do, the more times we add color. And I do want to get the edges a little bit. But the more flips we do, the more uh, we will see the colors, I guess, spread. Uh, <laughs> my hearts are also getting a lot sloppier. The more the colors will spread uh, and blend. And so it might look like there's a lot of white now, and it's hard to say for sure how much white 
will be left in the end on our yarn. And so uh, that is something that is also fun because we'll keep adding more and more color as long as I'm enjoying where the color is going, you know? But now we're gonna wait at least five minutes before we flip and add more color. I think I forgot to um, set the timer. So I think this waited more than five minutes. I kept looking and I'm like, oh, the timer's not going off. Yeah, I never said that. All right, I'm not even gonna check because I think it's been closer to 10 minutes. Uh, but we're gonna open up this yarn. And again, the goal as we flip, and you can see now with our flips, we're gonna see more color. The goal here is to expose yarn that doesn't have very much color on it yet. And so as I'm flipping this, I'm not just flipping it over, but at the zip tie, I am rotating it. Um, so that way we can, we're basically exposing the middle of the first side. Now, the sock yarn has less surface area, I guess. Or the sock yarn has more surface area because the plies themselves are smaller. My thought is with our bulky weight yarn, eh, we still have some big sections of white, okay. Because in general, there is less surface area with thicker yarn, but we're also not adding a ton of pigment at a time. And so if there's white patches in here, I'm trying to spread them out a little bit. But now we're gonna continue to layer color. You can see as I add more color, and it's on top of some color from the previous sides that's adding more of the pigment. And if we aren't getting a lot of spread, which again, we may see more spread, that is gonna add a little bit of a speckly quality to the yarn when it's worked up. Um, yeah, the colors are bigger than the like tiny little speckles that you can create, but there will be a lot of pastel with some slightly brighter patches of color throughout, and then some dark things when the colors really overlap. I continue to wait five-ish minutes in between flips, so that way, again, we might be getting some spread, but not too much spread of our colors. And it's possible that we would only do one more flip, but I have a feeling I'm gonna spot check the skeins to see if there's any huge white patches left and use those uh, and rotate the yarn to expose those for a fifth round of dyeing. Yeah, I think that would be a fifth round of dyeing. Once I was satisfied with the total amount of color I had added onto our yarn, I added some more water, but not more acid. We added plenty of acid with our first round, so I knew we didn't need more. And then I heated everything for 30 minutes from the last time I added dye. I know that I have talked about my journey with chronic fatigue syndrome uh, in some other videos and definitely in some live streams. Since I started talking about this again today, I just wanted to mention that I seem really okay with it right now and very positive, but getting to that mental space is something that took uh, years of therapy. And so I guess it's worth saying that your mental health, your emotional health, and caring for that is as important as it is to care for your physical body. And I don't think that it's uncommon for people who are going through a complex diagnosis process to then experience anxiety and depression, whether that was underlying already or because of the whole process and just not understanding what is wrong. And so it is always worth out trying to find someone to talk to and and if you don't click with the first therapist you find, uh, then it's worth trying to find someone else until you can find someone that really you can open up to. And so, I don't know, for me, that's something that it didn't really have an impact on my fatigue itself, but it did have a huge help in me accepting uh, my condition and yeah, I just figured that that was worth mentioning since I'm talking about it anyway. I don't think chronic fatigue syndrome, well actually I don't know if it's a rare disease or not. I don't know much about that, especially because 
again, it's a diagnosis by exclusion, and so so many people have different types of symptoms, and the source of those symptoms could also be different. But living with an invisible disease can be really hard, uh, especially, I don't know, I have a very uh, energetic, enthusiastic personality, and so uh, it can be hard for people to recognize when like the brain fog is really setting in and I'm struggling to connect thoughts and things like that. And so anyway, uh, let's go get back to the yarn. But I just, I don't know, I figured since I'm sharing, I may as well share more. And, and please know that if you are struggling with something, you're really not alone. And I think that's one of the big purposes of this day is that a rare or uncommon disease can be challenging, especially if doctors aren't initially taking your symptoms seriously. I was very lucky. Mine took mine very seriously and believed me that it was unusual from the get go. So that was that was great. But there are other people who are dealing with this. And I don't know if there's communities or what, but you're not alone. Anyway, for real now, we're gonna go check on the yarn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it has been 30 minutes, and just looking, I'm not seeing any color in the dye dye, which is good. And this colorway is mostly our blue, green, and pink, but again, we've got some elements where things overlapped, and it just works. It works so well. I'm really, really happy. But anyway, I turn off the heat. I'm going to leave the yarn here to cool completely, and then we can wash it. Let's wash all of our yarn together. It's hard to reach that up. All right, I am not anticipating that we're gonna see any bleeding here today. Uh, these are all colors I've used before, but oh, interesting. It's almost looking like, I can't tell for sure in this lighting, but it's almost looking like the backdrop is a hint of green. Uh, let me add some soap. We're gonna fill up this basin and I'm gonna find some light, some more light for here. Maybe not, maybe I'm just seeing a lot of the green and I'm not actually seeing like a green cast on the yarn. Because yeah, I definitely see some spots where there is some green spread and pink spread and blue spread. So we'll see what it looks like in the end if we feel like we see green throughout or what. But the good news, is we're not seeing any color bleeding. So I am going to finish rinsing out the soap, then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. And here is our finished yarn. The green, blue, and pink are still very apparent, and there's some little hints of purple in here where some of the colors have blended. Here you can see one of those blending marks. And there are a couple on our super bulky yarn as well. But I think overall there, the actually the little spots of color end up being really great speckles and I think will look like speckles when this thick yarn is knit up. And so that's pretty fun. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and maybe learning a little bit more about me, some things that maybe you weren't aware of. I still don't know whether chronic fatigue syndrome is a rare disease or not. Uh, searching sometimes says it is, but then I think there's more people affected than, say, some thresholds for what is counted as a rare disease for some types of research purposes. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to take this day and make it about me any more than except to say that I can empathize with a challenging diagnostic journey. And I know for me that there are still challenges that I face every day, but there's many things I am thankful for in that I found a way to live with my condition. So if you are struggling with a diagnostic journey and having struggling to have doctors listen to you and take you seriously, it's worth trying and either finding a new doctor, someone who will actually listen to your symptoms and I wish you luck because you know you are the best expert on your own body and hopefully when you advocate for yourself people will listen and so that's the most that I can hope for all of you. And if you aren't dealing with a complicated diagnostic journey, uh, please have empathy for people who are. 
If you want to learn more about Rare Disease Day, I will have a link down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.